In this video, we're going to cover custom model managers and custom query sets. These are the two mechanisms that allow you to communicate with the database through the Django ORM. The first topic we're going to cover is custom model managers, and they're actually fairly simple. You access your model manager when you do a model, say you have a product model and you do product.objects.filter. What you're doing is you're calling the filter method on that model manager. It just so happens that that model manager is also going down and do a custom query set. Instead of getting bogged down more into description, let's actually write some code and see how this all works. First thing that we're going to do is we're going to jump into our model. We're in our Django store that we have written and used in previous episodes, and we have our product model. This is a basic e-commerce product. The thing we want to do though is throughout our code we might consistently pull in only active products. So instead of continually doing filter active equals true, we can create a custom model manager and then all we have to do is call an active method doing something like product.objects.active and it'll return only active products. In order to do that we need to first declare a product manager class and inherit from models.manager. This is a class that every single model already inherits from and will end up overriding in our product model. And we'll get to that here in a second. Next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna do a new method and we're gonna call it active. And then we're going to return self.getQuerySet. This is a basic query set, it's not custom or anything. And then we're gonna do a dot filter active equals true. This is normal, this is what we do every day when we deal with the ORM. And that's really all there is to it. We also might wanna do a featured product as well. So in that case, the code is gonna look pretty much the exact same. We do self.getQuerySet.filter featured, featured equals true. And that's it. That's all we really need to do for our manager to be able to call an active or a featured function and get the results we're expecting back. If we jump down to our product model, we need to instantiate the product manager with the objects. What this is going to do is it's going to use our product manager, which inherits from manager, so it has all the same features that we would normally expect, we've just added to it. So we can still do a product.filter or a product.count or whatever we need to do. We're just adding active and featured to those as well. We can actually demonstrate this if we'll open up the shell and do an import of our model. And then let's actually do some queries. If we do product.objects.all, we get all of our objects. If we do product.objects.featured, we only get one product back. If we do product.objects.active, we get three products back. It's really fairly straightforward how we do it. The next question though is, we may set up future featured products that we wanna be featured as soon as we're doing, but we're gonna set it to active so that we don't actually get them. But how would we actually access this? It might be convenient to do product.objects.featured.active, that way we only get active and featured results from the get-go. Unfortunately, this just doesn't actually work because those methods are based around our manager and not our query set. This is actually a fairly simple fix if we'll exit out of our shell and then we'll go back into our model and we'll just start off by creating a new custom query set. So we'll start creating a class or product query set. We'll inherit from models.query.querySet. This is exactly what our product manager already uses. We're just adding, we're just gonna use this one instead and we're going to extend it. We're gonna do something very similar to our product manager with our active method, except we're just gonna use self instead, since we're using the qu uh, query set already. So we'll do self.filter.active equals true. And the same thing for featured, we'll do self.filter featured equals true. And now we have our custom query set. Now from our product manager, we need to actually get that query set. And so if we'll override the method in the product manager of get query set, and return the product query set, then we'll get the same effect. And all we have to do when we override the get query set is return an instantiated product query set with the current model, which we'll get from our product. The next thing that we need to do is since we're already using the get query set and we already have a method for active, we can just change this over to the active method and the same thing for featured. We can just change it over to featured and we still get the exact same effect as we did before, but now it's based on the query set and in the manager. So to demonstrate it, let's jump back into our shell 
And then first we'll do product.objects.featured, that still works. Product.object.active, and that still works. Now let's give it a shot. If we'll do product.objects.featured.active, we get a result back. And if we'll do it the long form of doing product.objects.filter for featured, and we'll do our filter for active, we again get the exact same result back. But you notice we have a lot slimmer code, and it's a little more easier to understand what's going on because we're saying, oh, we want featured and active. And that's really the power from creating a custom query set is that we can chain together our commonly used filters and we can use it with our custom manager so we have a starting off point for some of them. So again, the custom manager is there so that we can start the access to our database and we bind that to the objects property on a model. And then inside of that manager, we use our custom query set so that when we use that product model, or any other model, we can then chain together commonly used filters instead of having to write the exact same filters all the time. So this actually leads us to being able to do some very powerful and very dry code and in some instances lets us clean up our code quite a bit. I do hope you'll actually look into using this. This is a very powerful and useful feature in Django and reinforces one of the reasons I like Django. I want to thank you for watching and have a good rest of the day.